Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today is our Chapter 4 Algebra 1 test review. So let's go ahead and get started. Both of these for questions 1 and 2 say so they write an equation of the line in slope intercept form. Just a reminder that slope intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b. First thing we want to find is maybe the slope. For here in the slope, I just looked at the picture. I rise 1, 2, 3, and run 1, 2. So my slope or m is equal to 2 over 3. And then B, remember, that represents your y-intercept. So you're just basically looking at where does the line cross over the y-axis. And it actually crosses over the y-axis at 0. So B is equal to 0. So my answer for number 1 will just be y is equal to, oh, sorry, 3 over 2, over, of 3 over 2, x. Okay. For the next one, again, you're doing the same thing, finding your slope and finding the y-intercept. Slope is going to be negative this time. We're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3. So we'll have negative 4 thirds. And then b again is your y-intercept, and it intercepts at a positive 2. So my answer is y is equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 2. The next two or the next few questions ask you to write slope intercept form of the equation with a given characteristics. So this one has a slope of two fifths. So once again, here's slope intercept form. And I'm just going to plug in what I know. I know that m is equal to two fifths. I also know that x is negative three. And I also know that y is equal to one. What I don't know is the letter b yet, but I can solve for that. Let's go ahead and um, simplify this here. 2 fifths times negative 3, that'd be negative 6 fifths plus b is equal to 1. And I'm not actually even change 6 fifths to negative 1 and 1 fifth, just so it's easier to add. And then to solve for b, I'm going to add 1 and 1 fifth to both sides. So b is equal to 2 and 1 fifth. So my answer would be y is equal to 2 fifths x plus 2 and 1 fifth, or some of you might have even written 2 fifths x plus 11 fifths. So both of those would actually be correct. Okay. Again, for number 4, these just pass through 2, 1, negative 2, 1, and 2, negative 5. So what we need to know is our slope and our b, but before we can know b, we have to know x and y. Um, so what I did first is found my slope using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here's what that looked like. I did negative 5 minus 1. That's going to give me negative 6. And then 2 minus negative 2 would actually give me a positive 4, which would reduce to negative 3 over 2. Okay. The next thing I'm going to look at is plugging some information in. So I'm going to plug in m as negative 3 over 2. And then I do know an x value. I'm going to say my x value is negative 2. And then my y value is a positive 1. So here's what I have. 1 is equal to negative 3 halves times negative 2 plus b. I know that when I multiply negative 3 halves times negative 2, I'm going to get positive 6 over 2, which is just equal to a positive 3. And then I'm going to subtract both sides by 3 to get b is equal to negative 2. So my equation will be y is equal to negative 3 over 2x minus 2. And once again, if you even plugged in this 2 comma negative 5, you would still get the same answer. The next one, we're going to talk about a parallel line. Um, remember, parallel lines have the same slope. So first we're going to just rewrite this question so that I can have the same slope. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I'm going to have negative y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 to get y to be equal to positive. So y is equal to 2x minus 7. So my slope that I need to use is 2. So m is equal to 2. So if I have y is equal to mx plus b, I need to know what b is equal to first, but right now I don't know that. So what I'm going to do is plug in 2 for m. I'm going to plug in negative 5 for x. I'm going to plug in negative 3 for y and solve for b. Here we go. 
2 times negative 5. That's going to give me negative 10 plus b is equal to negative 3. And then I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So b is equal to a positive 7. So when I write my equation, it's going to be y is equal to my 2x plus 7. Okay. For number 6, this one's perpendicular. And remember perpendicular slopes, those are the negative reciprocal. So I'll just need to keep that in mind whenever I write my line. Um, this one is going to be a little bit different. We're just going to actually get x by itself. So I'm going to have 2x is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to negative 3. So maybe think about this. Whenever you um, graph x is equal to negative 3, I'm going to kind of sketch that here for us. It'd be 1, 2, 3. So here is x is equal to negative 3. So really, you can choose a horizontal, since this is vertical. You can choose a horizontal for it to be perpendicular. So what I maybe suggest is just finding something on the y-axis. So I may maybe go up to like y is equal to positive 5. If y is equal to 5, those are perpendicular because y is equal to 5, it will be a horizontal line. Okay, so that would be an option. Um, I really would think just as long as you choose a horizontal line, so anything where y is equal to something will give you that horizontal line. Okay, let's go on to the next page in number 7. It says write in point slope form the equation with the given characteristics. So just remember why, uh, point slope form looks like this. And the nice thing it is uh, it's already given us everything that we need to plug in. My slope is m, so that's negative 2. I have an x, which is negative 3. So x minus negative 3 would actually change it to x plus 3. And then over here, I would have y minus 5. So here's my answer. y minus 5 is equal to negative 2, parentheses, x plus 3. Same thing for this one. They want it in point slope form. And one thing they didn't give us is the slope. So what we'll have to find is the slope on our own. So remember, we can do y2 minus y1. So I'm going to do 2 minus negative 7 over x2 minus x1, 1 minus 4. 2 minus negative 7 is going to give me 9, which is plus positive, and 1 minus 4, or 1 plus negative 4, would give me negative 3, so my slope is equal to negative 3, okay? Now you can have two possible answers for number 8, because it depends on what points you plug in for point slope form. One of them I can have is this. I just plugged in my slope, and then used my first set of points for a negative 7. The other one, I can use my other set of points. So here's your other one written in red, again using the points 1, 2. So either way you do it, you should get either one of these correct. On your test, you only have to write one correct answer. Um, so just make sure you have that one correct answer correct. The next thing we're going to talk about is writing linear functions with the given values. These are a little bit different. The only difference is your final answer will be f of x is equal to and x plus b. So, Remember what we do here is we take each of these and we just write them as ordered pairs and then write them in slope intercept form. So I'm also going to come over here and do that to number 10 and then get started. So let's go ahead and find our slope first for number 9. Again, slope is difference in y's over difference in x's. So I did 7 minus 3, which is 4, 3 minus 1, which is 2. That's going to give me 2. And then what I'm going to do is take my slope intercept form. You could also do point slope form if you like to, and plug in my values to find b. So I'm going to plug in 2. I'm going to use um, 1, 3. So x is 1, y is 3, and then I'm going to solve. So I get 2 plus b is equal to 3, minus 2 on both sides. b is equal to 1. So my answer for number 9, y is equal to 2x plus 1. Next thing for number 10, again, let's go ahead and find our slope. 6, excuse me, 6 minus 5 is 1. 3 minus negative 3 would just give us 6. So my m is equal to 1 6. 
So again, let's plug in y is equal to mx plus b. I'm going to use 3 comma 6 as my um, points. So 1 6 times 3 plus b is equal to 6. 1 6 times 3, that's going to be 3 6 or 1 half. And then subtract 1 half. b is equal to 5 and a half or 5.5. So I can have f of x, and I forgot to write the other one in f of x form, so I'm going to change that real quick. f of x is equal to 1 6 x plus 5 and a half. Okay, so just a reminder, don't make the mistake I did. Write this as f of x for number 9, too. Okay? For number 11, this one is a table. We want to first figure out, is the situation modeled by a linear equation? So first we want to know, does it show a constant rate of change? I see plus threes on the top for each time, and I see plus fifteens on the bottom for each time. So our first answer would say, yes, it is linear. The next thing um, I would want to know is how to write an equation. One thing I can do is find your slope and then use x and y to plug it in to find b. So just for finding slope, I'm going to do change in y's over the change in x's. So I'm going to do 20 minus 5 over 4 minus 1. That's going to give me 15 over 3, which is equal to 5. So my m is 5. I'm going to take this y is equal to mx plus b and plug in 5, and I'm just going to use this very first ordered pair to plug in x and y. x is 1, and y is 5, so when I plug it in, I get 5 is equal to 5 plus b, so b is equal to 0. Um, so your only answer for this would be have to be y is equal to 5x, because b is equal to 0. Okay. On the next page, we have questions 12 through 16. So let's go ahead and start here. It says, write an equation for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, then find a of 10. So for this one, we're noticing that we're going down by fives each time. So the first thing I want to write is my equation. So here's my equation after I initially plugged it in. Remember, the only two things you need to keep in mind is your starting term, which was 2, and your distance, which is negative 5. I'm going to go and distribute the negative 5 to give me 2 minus 5n, sorry about that, 2 minus 5n plus 5. Then I'm going to combine like terms, so I get negative 5n plus 7. The next thing I want to do is find out when a of 10 is, so that means I'm just going to plug in 10 for the n. So that would be negative 50 plus 7, which is equal to negative 43. Oops. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over here in number 13. So here's my original equation with 4.5 being the initial term and adding 1.5 to being my constant rate of change. Once I distribute it, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I get a of n is equal to 1.5n plus 3. Now I'm ready to find a of 10, which will be 1.5 times 10 and then plus 3. That's going to give me 15, and 15 plus 3 is equal to 18. Okay, so once again, it asks you to do two things. So you need to make sure that you're showing both your arithmetic equation or sentence and then your answer from A of 10. The next one we're talking about the volume of water in a tank each hour after turning on a faucet. It says first write a function that represents the arithmetic sequence. So here's my equation and showing my work. I just plug in my initial, my initial term and my difference, and I get a of n is equal to 3n plus 9. This last one gives us the, vo the needed information for volume, 6 by 3 by 2. So first you need to do 6 times 3 times 2, which is going to give you 36. So 36 is actually the volume, and we want to find the nth term of when it would be full. So you're setting your equation equal to 36 and solving. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. I get 27 equals 3n 
So n is equal to 9. So the ninth term is when that tank would be full. Number 15, the and 16 both ask you if it's given lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So first I would uh, suggest you write them in y is equal to mx plus b form. Let's go ahead and do that with 15. So here's my first equation. I have y is equal to 2 thirds x plus minus 13. Now I'm going to do the second one right underneath that. So for my second one, I get y is equal to 4 fifths x minus 3. And if you notice that both of the slopes are not the same. So for number 15, you would say neither. Let's go ahead and look at number 16. So here's my first equation. Y was actually by itself the first, so all I had to do is divide. Now let's try the second. So here's my second one, and notice my slope is 3x. My other one was negative 1 third. So for number 16, we can say is perpendicular. Last page. For this one, it tells what type of correlation. So remember, you're either going to have a positive, negative, or no correlation. The height of a person and the length of the stride. That's probably going to be a positive correlation because of the taller they are, the longer they stride. The num for number 18, though, it says the number of text messages sent daily and the number of meals eaten daily. That would be no correlation because text messages and meals are not related. The next one we have are pretty easy. For number 19, this is no correlation. But number 19b, that is a negative correlation. And then the last one, number 20, talks about the grade point average. It says, what is the grade point average of the student who spends six hours a week on homework? So remember, all you have to do is look at six here and their grade point average is a 2.0. The last one says how many hours a week does a student who has a 2.75 grade point average spend on homework? So we just go over maybe 2.75 I think it's probably right about here. So it looks about 12 hours. Okay that's going to conclude your review for chapter 4 test for algebra 1. Thanks so much for tuning in and good luck on your test.